Hey guys, it's me, Pre, aka that Pokemon boy, and today I will be carrying on with my IEP series. Uh, this is week five, and this is an important week because at the end of this week, each team will know roughly where they will be expected to finish, um, because it will be the halfway point of the regular season. Going into this week, we were top of the league, uh, not top of the league, sorry, we were top of the conference, and there is a difference because there's two conferences. And whilst we were top of our conference, which is the uh, dev conference, the Hot Home Happy Hour, who are coached by Barry, were top of the Silk conference, and they boasted the best um, record in the league because they were the team with the most kills, the team with the most wins, the team with the least lo losses, and the team with the least deaths. So I knew I had to bring my A game. Uh, and quick run through of my team. I brought Floor just in, uh, instead of my Tentacle because I didn't feel as if I needed a spinner, so I wanted the extra cleric. I brought the mascot Pokemon Magneton for the first time this season because I wanted to magnet pull the Skarmory and keep it in track because that was what he was going to use to control hazards on the field. I brought Defog on my Latias because I didn't have, I don't want to bring the spinner, therefore I needed something to get rid of his. Uh, hazards and basically get rid of things on the field and I brought Azumarill with the Assault Vest but I also put Brick Break on it because I know that he likes to run Meowstic to put screens up so I felt as if if I could get rid of said screens I would be at um, a good point because that meant he was taking normal damage that's why I brought Brick Break. So to start the game off I Thunderbolt and I didn't Volt Switch here for a reason because if I Volt Switch, he's free to keep the Skarm. Even if it brings him down to 1%, he's free to keep the Skarm. If I Thunderbolt and stick it in, he can't escape because obviously he's being Magnet Pulled. That's why I went for the Thunderbolt. Stealth Rocks go up on my side, I Thunderbolt and just get a kill. Goes into King Kilda. I pull out, go into my Hippowdon, and Sand comes up, he knocks off which means I lose my lefties. I then go into Latias and he pulls an Ice Punch. I basically thought he might Drain Punch there, that's why I went into Latias. Uh, the Ice Punch may have been a prediction or it was just because Hippowder was in there. Either way, that was a good move for him. And this was questionable. He Mac Punches there. I Defog. And I'm at 3%. I go into Azumarill as he knocks off takes off my Lumberry now oh, earlier on I did say I had Assault Vest didn't I ignore what I said I didn't have Assault Vest I had Lumberry because um, he often carries Thunder Wave as well on a couple of his Pokemon I think it's Meowstic that he does and I wanted to keep this Azumarill fresh simply because I wanted to get rid of the screens so I just click play rough here because I didn't really see anything coming in and taking that too well. But the problem is I miss, uh, and basically that means that Meowstic is able to get a reflect up and um, knock off wouldn't kill there. But I do get rid of his likely. He thunder waves, uh, that's Lumberry can't, well, obviously it's been knocked off so I can't sort that problem out. He reflects, this time I hit the play rough, but it's not doing as much. He pulls into Medicham. I brick break. Uh, that was a good play on his part because I'm pretty sure he saw the brick break coming. I go into a powder on as he decides to bulk up. Straight away, I know he's going to baton pass. He's done it a lot so far this season, so I knew that that would be his uh, game plan again. That's why I let him get it up here because I knew I could get my rocks up. He's got no way of getting hazards, so I can power the hazards on him. He calm minds. So I roll him out, put him into Meowstic. Meowstic dies to the rocks. Straight away, that means he can't get screens up. I'm happy with that. Conk comes in and I go into Magneton. I think he may have predicted this because he goes for the Dream Punch. That was a superb play on his part, and it means that I can't Volt Switch out anymore. Uh, as if Adam comes in, slacks off. Uh, he knocks off. Probably thinking I'd switch. I go into Azumarill as he Dream Punches, uh, and I basically let him Dream Punch again because I want to go for Play Rough. I crit him, I kill him. Does the crit matter? Don't think so. Uh, he goes into Barbarical, which is basically because he had Poison Jab. Tough Claws kills me. I go into Latias now, and I recover, thinking he'd switch, but he goes for the X's. 
Uh, so I just dropped Draco to 48, which isn't a lot really, as he exes and kills me. And uh, now I go into Flawless, knowing I could take at least one um, poison jab. That's why I went for the Moon Blast. And now he's in a range where I can kill him again, thanks to me outspeeding him. It goes into Zard, and I was unsure here because basically, as as I've mentioned it before, you can draft any Pokemon with pen potential to Mega Evolve in the Mega Round. This gives Charizard a bit of an advantage, whoever drafts Charizard, because not only can they use regular Charizard, well no one wants to, but you could, but you could run Zard X or Zard Y, so effectively you're getting three Pokemon, and there's the additional surprise factor of which Mega is it, because there's only so much guessing you can do based off looking at his team. Now, I made a bold prediction here and I said, right, I think this is Zard X. Even though his team is already very physical, I thought this will be Zard X. That's why I go into Hypowdon. I risked there, there I risked uh, the um, Zard Y. Luckily it was Zard X as he Dragon Dances. And he Dragon Claws, that is 36. I've Rock Slide looking to kill. And next turn I will get the kill. Uh, Dragon Claw, but Rock Slide misses here. Luckily, I've got Sandstorm, so Sandstorm can take care of the Zard as Medicham comes in here. And I was pretty sure he'd try and either Carmine or Bulk Up. That's why I pull into Talon Flame. And the Brave Bird gets the kill here, as you will now see. There it is. GG Barry. Because that was. 3 0 does not sum up how close that game was. Because there were times where. Yeah, it was, it was a close game. And this basically meant that we were now uh, not only top of our conference, but we had the best record in the league, along with Barry's Hot Home Happy Hour. So the next game I had that week was against Connor, who we played before, coach of the Pewter Pin Missiles. Last time it was a 6-0 win. I knew he would do everything he could to stop that from happening again, and rightly so, because obviously you don't want to lose again by uh, a fairly big margin. Now, this time he brought things to stop my Absol. He brought the Ampharos, which I could not do hit KO, and he brought a Ditto, which could be anything. He leads off with Chinchino, which again he didn't bring last time, and so far Chinchino had been one of his star Pokemon, so I was surprised. Uh, I need a tentacle, thinking I can take at least one hit of whatever he wants to throw up. Crispy on the first tail slap did not really matter. Um, and subsequently, obviously, Skill Link does the job for him and Life Orb. I bring in Talonflame. Uh, he switches out into Armor Star and I Brave Bird anyway. Now, I was pretty sure he would switch into either Ampharos or Armor Star. But here's the thing I was adamant not jolly. That meant I couldn't. No, sorry, I was. Yeah, I was adamant not jolly, which basically meant I couldn't outspeed his Chinchino unless I went with a Brave Bird, because obviously priority. Bearing that in mind, I thought, wait, what if I U-turn out, predicting the Omastar or the Ampharos, and he predicts my U-turn and goes for the Rock Blast? Suddenly, I'm not looking so good, because Talonflame could take on a lot of his team, about half of his team. That's why I went for the Brave Bird, because this way, it's a safer play. Switch out into my AV Rotom Wash, uh, Rotom Heat. Uh, he Ancient Powers, which does a decent amount. And I evolve switch out, knowing I would add speed. I go into my Latias, and I'm looking to kill it with a Surf. It is about 72, thanks to. Um, well, I don't even know, but yeah, it does. He Dark Pulses, I recover. Uh, I go into Rotom Heat here and take the Dark Pulse. I overheat, it doesn't do a lot because I basically just wanted to sack off the Rotom Heat, he reveals Power Gem. And there I can go into a Power Drum. He Dragon Pulses again gets a crit which isn't really too much of a matter. I Earthquake and kill because nothing really wants to come in on the Earthquake. He goes into Armor Star and I decide to go into Latias. He Surfs, I can take that fairly well. He takes the Life Orb Recoil, I'm the one buffeted by Sam's Sandstorm. As he now brings this in, I drop the Draco. The reason I took Draco was because, regardless of what wants to come in, I'm doing big damage. 
Getting rid of his di ditto is huge for me because that basically means Absol again is in a good position here to go on onto most of his Pokemon. He brings in Pinsir. I switch out into Paradon. He exes is there. And here he goes with a turn crit. Maybe it mattered, maybe it didn't. Doesn't make a difference really. Uh, Time Flame comes in here. He almost start. Okay. This was the one play that would have given me game. Because if he lets Pinsir die there to my Brave Bird, he can then bring in Omastar at 42%. One Brave Bird won't kill him, which forces me to switch. But because he hard switches in, Brave Bird does enough so that I can hit him with two and kill him, obviously. I decide not to do that though for one reason only. And that's because if I did that, I might have taken <coughs> sorry, I might have taken too much damage over everything else, and that would have meant that Talonflame went down, and something that could outspeed everything else and kill everything else would have been able to do so. That's why I go into Latias. He dies to the life or recoil. I get a psychic off here, kill his Chinchino. As he now brings a pincer, quick attacks. Fine by me, Tangling comes in. Brave bad. Takes out the pincer. And Espeon comes in. Brave bad. Takes out the Espeon. And this is what I mean here, see? With 20% left, if I would have had to kill the Chinchina with a Brave bad from Talonflame, that would have taken my Talonflame out. So it made. It would have been better for him if he hadn't sacked the armor star on the hard switch. Nonetheless, uh, it's a 2-0 victory in the end for me. And at the end of week 5 this was, uh, I had 1-7 lost to. Um, for now, that's it guys.